2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. And everybody's desire, I hope, is to be closer to the Lord. And um, verse 1. Whew. I'm going to get there. <laughs> Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are what? Perishing, which is the message of truth. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel or the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For it is God who commanded what? Oh, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. Everyone say, light of the knowledge. Of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's powerful. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. So we are hard pressed on every side. Yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God is in the face of Jesus. You know, many people, all, I always see, oh, you see the face of God, you're going to die. You ain't going to die to yourself, man. You know, when we came, um, when we came home from a revival in Brownsville, and you probably heard this story before, this testimony, and I, and I brought a video back. And the video was the glory of God that fell in this room. And when that, there was a preacher, there was a, 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 and he was standing behind the pulpit. And when he walked behind the pulpit, the glory of God hit the whole place. And he about fell down. And, I, and it wasn't about what was going on. It was like, all of a sudden I said to the Lord, that's your glory. And when I said that, all of a sudden it was like two big hands came around me and went, crushed me. And every bit of breath left me. I could not breathe. I, had, I could not take anything, nothing. My head went straight back. My, I just looked right up to heaven. I had no choice. It was like somebody grabbed me and crushed me. And every bit of breath came out. Then a new breath came in. And man, I began to flip and flap like a fish out of water. And I was on the couch, and Mom and Kate and another woman were there. And the first thing my, uh, I think somebody wanted to call 911, and Kate said, no, that's the glory. And, and, and so my wife moved the coffee table because I was flipping and flapping. I, she knew I was going to fly right in that coffee table and probably bust it. But I'm telling you, I was torquing, and I mean, I didn't feel anything. And I fell on the ground. I was, now I got to know what holy roller is. Man, I was rolling. I had no control. None. None whatsoever. And languages were flying out of my mouth in every tongue and language that I knew. Chinese, Japanese, everything that you can imagine was flying out of my mouth as I was rolling back and forth. And when I finally stopped, I saw the face of God come in that living room. And the Lord said to me, be not dismayed that I've come to dwell with you. I still couldn't move. And then he said, lay the hands on everyone there for the lost. See, the glory was being restored so there'd be a thirst and hunger for the lost. 
And I believe God is doing that right now. But he wants to have a face-to-face -face relationship with us. Not long distance. A face-to-face -face relationship. And so, and in my beginning walk with the Lord, after my visitation from the Lord, I mean, the only thing I can see was the glory. I mean, his presence was covered by the glory. I couldn't truly see his face. It was all glory. But as I began to pray and seek the Lord, and I began to hear him say, seek my face. And I'm thinking, well, you know, the words people were telling me, nobody's ever saw your face. And he said, you've seen my face. It's Jesus. And as I began to see the face, that all of a sudden as I began to pray and pray in the Spirit, the face of Jesus would appear. And then, uh, and then I used to see him in, a, in a, a, like a robe. Almost like a hoodie. You know? But it was long. And he would look at me. And then I got snagged in something. And I couldn't see his face. It was blank. But I saw the robe. And I didn't know because a witch had got a hold of me and gave me an accursed item that I didn't know. And she proclaimed to be a, and you probably heard some of this already, and she proclaimed to be a believer and put a bracelet on, telling me it was a point of contact. Well, she lied. And the moment I put that bracelet on, I could not see the face of the Lord anymore. And I began to weep and cry because I wanted to see my dad's face. And it wasn't until I took that accursed item off that I could see the Lord again. There was another time when he turned his face on me away. And that's when I was disobedient. And for many people, you might think, well, that wasn't disobedience. It's because I rejected something he was trying to bring me. But I, even though I didn't know it was him, I didn't find out till later it was him. But I was chasing for three days with no, not being able to see. And God wants us to have a face-to-face -face relationship. None of this religious garbage. None of this false relationship. See, because when there's a face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord, you know who you are. Because there's an exchange. Face-to-face. -face. There's an exchange all the time. Whew. In 2 Peter chapter 1. Everyone say face-to-face. -face. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God is in the face of Jesus. D don't lose sight of that. Because the knowledge of God Almighty is light. And the glory of the, light, of the knowledge is in the face of Jesus. He expresses everything. In other words, it's in his content. It's who he is. In verse 2. First, uh, Second Peter Chapter 1, verse 2. Bear with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge of God and of Jesus our Savior. Now, knowledge is light, isn't it? It is the light of the knowledge of God. Amen. And of our, our Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the what? Knowledge, which is light, of him who called us by glory. He called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. In other words, he's saying, look at if you do partake of this, if you if a face-to-face -face relationship will bring the divine nature to you. He said, be multiplied in the light of the knowledge of God and the divine power that we have 
to access the manifesting divine nature that overcomes all temptations and all corrupt influence of worldly sinful desires. See, without activating the divine nature, now, when there's a face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord, the human nature and the divine nature are always exchanged. Remember, face-to-face -face relationship is a constant exchange process. It's an automatic policy with God Almighty. He will exchange everything that's hindering you for his freedom, for his love, for his power, for his glory. For his glory. If there's a face-to-face -face relationship. Psalm 51. In other words, God has given us an imagination. In your imagination is the window of image. We're to place the face of Jesus in that place. It's our, respons to put, our responsibility to put the face of Jesus Christ in your image. So that you're not praying to the air anymore. You're praying, you're speaking to him. See, that's where you move everything out. You drive everything out. And you put his face there. That's why the word says, seek my face. Amen? See, people don't really understand that area. It's to put his face there. You put his face there and you see him. And believe me, when you do that, his lips move and talks to you. Not imaginary. You just allow him. To be placed before you. And he will speak to you. Verse 1. Psalm 51. Let's speak it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? Transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Why? Why would he want? He's so desperate to be freed from the presence of evil. Amen. From any actions influenced by the presence of evil that he's done. And from any, any inherited curses. Why? Because he wants everything out of his way so he can be face to face. Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Remember, sin is the presence of evil. We are surrounded by evil all over the place. Amen. Constantly. That's why you must bring the presence. Your, our responsibility is to drive out evil to bring God's presence. God's presence doesn't come until you drive out evil. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in inward parts, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with what? Hyssops, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness, that the boundary of broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me what? A clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Wow. Things that hide his face from us is pride. Lies, cheating, amen. Unforgiveness, bitterness, lukewarmness will hide his face. Coldness hides his face. How about unconfessed sin or rebellion? How about an unruly tongue? How about disobedience? Stealing? How about robbing God from tithes and offerings? All of these things will hide his face from us. How about selfish ambitions? Lust? 
How about people that refuse to worship God? <laughs> Non-seekers of his presence. They don't seek his face. He hides his face from them. Many times people don't realize that their wrong choices have just shed the, moved the face of God. Untouching unclean things, even do certain doctrines will move the face of God away. Those are doctrines of deception and, of course, we call doctrines of demons. And, and things that we might agree with that God disagrees with will also move the faith. See, that's one of the ways he shows us that there's something wrong. Amen? Because sometimes the heart is too hardened to hear. So he'll, he'll hide from us. He moves his face from us. And when he does that, there's something wrong. There's something that's offending him. There's something out of order. And we're to search that through. And what did the psalmist do? Lord, what was he doing? He was actually seeking God to restore the face of God to him. What is it that I've done that's caused this? Why are you hiding your face from me? Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes he plays hide and seek. He, it's his favorite game. And that's just to bring you closer. Sometimes it's to draw you closer so you can cross over and go deeper. But I can tell you, majority of the time, it's because something's not right. And when God hides his face, when he turns his face from you, the enemy knows it. And he comes. And he comes in familiar. He comes in multiple ways to try to replace the face of God or his presence, to bring another. He tries to false comfort us. Oh, you'll be okay. No. None of us is okay. Amen? Even when we think we're okay. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. No, you're not. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. Again, this is what separates us from the world. And this is what separates us from those who live in the outer court. Psalm 37. Speak at verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only brings harm. So what's he saying? Trust, delight, commit, rest. Seek his face. Amen? Seek his righteousness. Seek his ways. See, so many times there's an area where people are asking for something without seeking. Amen? They're wanting something from God, and it's not that he's not trying to hold it back. But he wants you to be closer. I mean, so many times, I mean, we get blessed. I mean, he loves to bless his children. But sometimes our blessings, we begin to focus more on our blessings than we do the blesser. And that's when we begin to compromise, drift. And that one little compromise. You know, we be, and I'm not saying you're not saying thank you. We thank the Lord for everything. Thank you for the blessing today. Thank you, Lord. But we begin to focus on the thanking for the blessing instead of seeking the presence. Amen? And this is what we want to get to. I mean, every one of us has been blessed. We can thank God all day long for everything he's done for us. But it ain't going to get you in the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Genesis 32.
in verse 22. Jacob, wonderful example. In verse 22, it says that Jacob arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed over the Jordan of Jacob. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you what? Bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. <laughs> For you have struggled or wrestled with God and with men and have what? Prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God, what? Face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he what? Crossed over Penal, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. Jacob struggled with God. In reality, he was struggling. God allowed this so that Jacob would pursue. So that he would have the ability to cross over. But Jacob realized that that was not a man. Hello? He realized it was the presence of God. Whether it was an angel, whether it was the Lord, I can't tell you I wasn't there. I wish I was, though. But, you know, sometimes we're wrestling with God, and sometimes people think it's the enemy. <laughs> sometimes they wrestle with God more than they do with the enemy. And God is trying to get us to another place. He's trying to get our attention. Amen? He struggled with God to cross over it. And when he, when, when he finally he said, listen, I'm not letting go until you bless me. Now, what did he do? When he blessed him, he gave him a new name, representing a new identity. Amen? Because the name is always associated with who you are. But when he blessed him, he said, look, from now on, you're a new creation. I'm going to give you a new identity because you prevailed with me. Because you didn't let anything move. You held on, you held on, you held on. And there's a reward for holding on and being steadfast. Does everybody understand? And what happened to him? He crossed over. And God was with him all the way through. Is everybody okay? <laughs> See, many are not willing to fight to cross over. Second Chronicles 7. Face to face. You know, we sing that song, which is face to face. Second Chronicles 7. Hallelujah. And my spirit's still worshiping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Chronicles seven. In verse 13. Glory, glory. Everybody there? The Lord said, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or 
send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray in what? Seek my face. And turn their, from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and what? Heal their land or even their bodies. See, seek my face. He's going to forgive and he's going to heal. His face is his presence, his character, his integrity, his desires. It's him as a person. Listen, when you go to someone, you don't talk to the back of them. Amen. In fact, if you went to go talk to someone and their back was to you, you'd probably tap them on the shoulder and say, yo, I'd like to talk to you. Amen. That's the same thing with God. But so many people don't get God's attention. They're not willing to get his attention. The only attention they get is when they sin and they get convicted. That's by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> face to face. Seek my face. Seek my presence. Seek my will. Seek who I am. And the more you come to me, the more you will be. Numbers 12. Hallelujah. And you know, and the more that you do this, the more easier it is to cross over. You'll be tap dancing across. <laughs> Praise God. In verse 1, is everybody there? Numbers 12, verse 1, let's speak it. Then Miriam... And Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Ooh. Now the man Moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam... Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both went forward. Then he said, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all of my house. I speak with him what? Face to face. Even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against him. And he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became Leprous, as white as snow. Then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, a leper. And Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us, in which we have done foolishly, in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Please heal her, O oh God. I pray. And then the Lord said to Moses, if her father had spit in her face, what she, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterwards she may be received again. You know, many people are not careful of who they speak against. Be careful what you say about the Lord's anointed individuals that he's placed. He will turn his face from us. Amen? And it's not just about a place or position or whatever. It's about an individual. I'm going to give an example, and it's got nothing to do about who I am. or I'm, I'm, I'm his. Amen? But something happened one time, and there was a woman that was coming to our Bible studies all the time. And I mean, she, anyways. Um, she was always challenging. Everything was being taught. 
And uh, so she came up to me one day. She goes, I need you to pray for this, this, and this. And, and the Holy Spirit said, tell her to pray for herself. And I said, you need to pray for yourself. Well, she shot me the finger. I didn't say nothing. I thought, whoa, exposed you. I walked away. The next Bible study, she showed up. She had these sandals on. Her feet were full of fungus. The, the thing, that scripture that came to me was about the leper. Her feet were full of fungus. She was in pain. Then she said, will you pray for me? <laughs> Anyways, again, it's, it's about coming against God's call. That was the first time I saw that happen. Then I've seen other things happen afterwards. And sometimes they don't happen instantly, but they happen down the road. Nobody gets away with coming against the Lord's children. Amen? Nobody. Hallelujah. So be careful what you say about the Lord's anointed. He will turn his face from you. Psalm 16. Glory. In verse 7. I will what? Bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always what? Before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be what? Now, when is he setting the Lord before him? Is he setting his back before him or his face? His face. Hallelujah. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be moved. Why? Because he's setting his face before him. He's got a face-to-face -face relationship. Believe me, you won't go back if you have a face-to-face -face relationship. You will overcome. Why? Because in that face-to-face -face relationship, the divine nature is activated. Now there's the divine with the divine. He's truly your father and you're truly his child. Verse 9, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life and in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forever and ever more. Hallelujah. Sets the Lord before him. Sets his face before him. Amen. You know, one of, the, one of the most painful things is when we do something stupid and the face of God is gone. Amen. The painful thing is getting it back. That is painful. You know, when you know you backslide, you did something, you know, and you know that the face of God is not there. The painful. It's painful. It's emotionally painful. Because when his face isn't there, his presence isn't either. Amen? It's very difficult. And if you notice that if you were in a condition of backsliding, you've done something, that process sometimes, the longer you're out there, the harder, it's, the harder it gets to get his face before you. It is painful. That is the price of coming back to the face of God. Amen? And anybody, everyone, we all know this in that area. If you backslid, you know what it's like. You know when you blew it. And that pain of getting back restored to him again and again. And it doesn't happen instantly. There's a process. And, it's, and, it, it, and, so, and, and the hope is so that we remember. We remember that pain. We know we can't live without him. He's to be number one in priority. We never want to go through that again. Never. Hallelujah. Revelation 3. You know, you can carry a picture of them in your pocket and it still won't help. Huh? 
Oh, I lost the faith. Don't let me pull it out. That ain't going to help. Hi, Lori. No. You want God's presence, his face. Amen? Glory. And you fight till you get that presence, his presence and his, his face back again. <laughs> I mean, you don't get too many people come up to you and say, man, I lost the face of God. I lost the Lord's face. You know? Most people won't even admit it. Revelation 3.14. And to the angel of the church of the Lord, the scenes write, these things says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth or I will turn my face from you. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to do what? Buy. That's a price. Seek. For me, gold refined in fire. Now, gold refined in fire is pure. So he's saying, seek my face in the purity of who I am. That you may be rich. And that's not wealthy. It's rich with him. And white garments that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. I'm telling you, I, for me, it, it, when the Lord came, I was, I was so, I was wealth. I'm, I was a gazillionaire. And there wasn't anything. I, I mean, somebody could wrote me a, a gazillion dollar check and it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> because to know him and the reality of knowing the truth was so overwhelming to me. Just to know the truth. My goodness, what an honor to, blessing is for every one of us to have an opportunity to know the truth and then to trample that truth. Is devastating. It's devastating to the individual. And it's disheartening to the Lord. Amen? He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and do what? Be zealous and what? Repent. The word says, if you repent, then when you worship God, you seek his face, there'll be a refreshing. Amen? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, if, who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. Now, it, <laughs> and to him who overcomes, I will what? Grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, gold is refined. It becomes, it's the purest. It's the purest of substance. He's saying, seek the purest of substance of Christ, his character, and his integrity. In Isaiah 51. Uh, I think that's Isaiah 57. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woohoo. Maybe. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Somewhere around here. Let's start at verse 15. <laughs> Woohoo. Glory. <laughs> Let's speak it, please. 
For thus is the high and the lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him who has a... Wait a minute. Verse 15 again. For thus says the high and the lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with who? Him who has a what? Contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. To receive, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Oh, snap. For I have not, con I, I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit would fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I did what? I hid and was angry. And he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts to him and to his mourners. Wow. So what does God do? He hides. But what's, who is he looking for? Someone that has a contrite and humble spirit. Humble. Jeremiah 2. And verse 17. He says, have you not brought this on yourself? Is everybody there? And that you have forsaken the Lord your God? When he led you in the way? And now why take the road to Egypt, which means bondage, or to the world? To drink the waters of Shalar. Or why take the road to Assyria to drink the rivers, the waters of the river? Your own wickedness will correct you. And your backsliding will rebuke you. Now therefore, and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God. And the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. Believe me, he will turn his face as soon as that reverence is gone. Even if it's compromised. I'm going to tell you, compromised. Whew. Distance right away. No fear of God. Those who are compromised, the reverence of God. And Psalm 80. Let's speak it together. Restore. Restore us, O oh God. Cause your what? Face to shine. And we shall be what? Saved. O oh Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? Man, let me tell you, when God's face is gone, he ain't answering prayer. I'm going to tell you right now. You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in their great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O oh God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be what? And we shall be saved. Let your face, or in other words, God loves to restore his face, but there's a process. Nobody gets away with it easy. There's a process. And if you're not a seeker of his face, I feel sorry for you. And you're only a seeker of his hand. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 39. Seeking your, his hand will not know him. Only seeking his face. Ezekiel 39 verse 23. Never measure a person's relationship by the abundance of materialism. He 
You know, you'll know a person by their desires. What's their desire? What they put their time to. Verse 23, let's speak it together, please. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore, I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. Why? Because they were unfaithful to him. One of the things that would definitely remove the face of God is non-repentance for unfulfilled vows. Verse 24, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, now I will bring back the captivity of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be zealous for my holy name. After they have borne their shame, after they have what? Borne their shame and their unfaithfulness in which they are unfaithful to me when they dwelt safely in their own land and no one made them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and I am what? hallowed or honored or respect and feared in them in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. I will not hide my face from them anymore, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God Almighty. In other words, man, we have the power and the anointing to continue to seek his face. We have no excuse except for willful sin. And I'm going to close at Revelation 22. Face to face. We are in a time right now where face to face is essential. Revelation 22 and verse 1. Let's speak it. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree um, yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall what? See his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They shall need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever and ever. Face to face. Let's go up another level and get face to face. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed when face to face. What does it say? Hey, when they see his face, they got a new name, didn't they? Man, I'm telling you, you see his face, your identity changes to who you are. Put his face in that window all the time. When you pray, face to face, set him before you. Lord, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word, and we want to be face-to-face -face with you, Papa. We want to see your face and know you and behold your glory. We want to honor you and respect you and live a life that's worthy for your honor and glory. We don't want to mess up, Lord. In fact, we want to be perfect, but we mess up when we try to be perfect. So only through your anointing, through your divine nature, can we overcome anything. We need your help. So we ask for your mercies and grace and aggressive anointing be released to us today, even as we sit in this room and prepare our hearts for communion. Fill us, dress us, possess us, and empower us that we may be sons and daughters well-pleasing to you, setting you before us and seeking your face in everything we do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. <laughs>